Welcome to 3ds Max news for the month of August. I hope everyone is enjoying the summer, uh, almost the end. And normally it's a quiet month, but this month is exceptionally rich in news. So let's go because we have a lot to cover. First huge news is that now all Thinbox products are now free. This includes Krakatoa, Frost, Stock, Sequoia, Xmesh and Deadline. And yeah, they are like awesome plugins, some of the best that we have around, and they are totally free. These are huge news and some people maybe will not know some of these plugins, so I will make a small description of the ones related to 3ds Max. Krakatoa is in one hand a point renderer, it allows you to render points, but millions of points, and in the other hand it's a complete particle manipulation toolbox. Comp objects to create millions of particles over surface or over volumes, or you can load particles that you are saved previously with a popular PRT file format. PRT is one of the lightest methods to move particle data around, supports all types of data channel, uses very few memory, and it's very fast. That's why we use it to move data between Maya, Max, and Houdini, it's great. It also has MagmaFlow, that MagmaFlow is a nodal-based system to manipulate all this type of data that comes via PRT. It's very powerful, you can query information based on mesh proximity, apply filters, conditionals, curve values, save data, and a lot of things. Maybe one of the most famous users of Krakatoa are these videos playing on the background by Matthias Müller, that is making extensive use of Krakatoa and MagmaFlow to create these amazing visuals. Frost is a measure. I started having different methods to mesh, being maybe one of the most popular for me, the Zubrison method, that allows you to mesh liquids. It's very easy and straightforward and allows you to mesh millions of particles. All these plugins work very well together, so you can mesh particles coming from thinking particles, type flow, p flow, or PRT loaders. Also, Frost can instance mesh at render time with V-Ray, being one of the fastest and most efficient ways to instance millions of heavy objects using very few RAM. Here are some user cases of Krakatoa and Frost used in production at a Scanline VFX. The snow that you can see on the Dragon is simulated in a storm, and then we exported this data as a PRT. In 3ds Max, we load this PRT with PRT loader from Krakatoa, and particles are manipulated in MagmaFlow. Again, MagmaFlow comes from Krakatoa to add color and add some variation there, and we mesh the final result with Frost, and we render the final look in V-Ray. In Aquaman, all rain was simulated as well in thinking particles. Then we use partitions, that is a technique in Krakatoa, to uh, simulate multiple times with some variations to have millions and millions of rain droplets, single rain droplets, and then the final result is mesh with frost. You can have millions and millions of particles here. And finally, to showcase the impressive range of variation where you can use Krakatoa and frost, this short Aquaman goes to the deep with all these monsters following. It was simulated in thinking particles, the data was exported as PRT, and then using magma flow to generate a data channel that drives the monster speed animation based on the speed of the particle. So if the particle moves faster, the animation of the monster will move faster. And all this is a deal between Krakatoa and Frost. A stock, another plugin from Thinbox, allow you to generate millions of particles using as velocity fields, other particles, geometry, or fields that can come from film effects, for example. It's really fast and can increment your particle amount in a very easy way, as you can see on this example. Using very few particles, you can get an result that looks super rich and it's simulated in seconds. A stock as well comes with Genome, and Genome is super powerful. It's similar to MagmaFlow, but instead of operating over particles, it operates over vertex, faces, segments, or UVs. It's great to create more complex and specific modifiers, being totally multi-threaded. If you come from Houdini, it's very similar to Bob's in Houdini. Mesh is a powerful way to store mesh information, to be reused in 3ds Max, or to move this across other applications. You can have XMesh in Maya or Cinema 4D. And finally, Deadline is one of the most popular render manager solutions. To send your 3ds Max render or simulation to be rendered on the farm, or actually you can send anything to Deadline. You can send After Effects, new projects, anything. Again, I think this is huge news for 3ds Max and for folks that work in VFX because are excellent products and they are totally free. You can download floating license. I think that they allow you to download 50,000 floating license. So actually, yeah, they are giving it for free. 
Max 2A has been updated to give support to a new Arnold 7.1.3. On this version, we have an improved V-Ray Asyn converter. So now all materials, maps, lights, and other objects will be automatically converted to Arnold compatible objects in one single click. There is as well better and improved anisotropy settings for more natural, for more natural scattering looks, improvements on volume emission, uh, for more control on your smoke and fire volumes, and more improvements, including USD enhancements. Remember, you have all the links on the description below where you can find more information about all of this. You like free stuff, I like free stuff, and we have more free stuff in 3ds Max. Assembly tool, it's a super script, and it's done by Andrew Aberkin. And this is a collection of scripts, actually, very well packed in one single place, where you can have it as a modifier panel somewhere. And as you can see on the video, it's orientated to a scene assembling with cool and easy ways to manipulate objects, including a way to move them around using collisions, a smarter ways to work with layers, groups, pivot point placements, a scene management, object painting, scattering tools, randomization tools, and a lot, lot more. It's an awesome, awesome script, again, totally free. So thank you a lot, Andrew, amazing tool. More huge news, and it's that we have a new and exciting version of FumeFX 6, and it's by far for me the biggest change that we had to FumeFX ever. We have a completely new node-based procedural system that is not only about a smoke and fire this time, but allow for complex rigid body dynamics, cloth dynamics, soft bodies, boxer grip manipulations, and as you can see on the video, it has deep integration with Arnold, Arnold Curve, instances, volumes, and way more. You can access now the beta and use it until December, and again, totally for free. This month, it's about free stuff, I think. Amazing stuff. And now that we talk about particles, more particles. We have Thinking Particles 7.2 with a new math expression language, they call it MEL, that runs orders of magnitudes faster over OpenVDBs. Also, they update all the libraries of OpenVDB to the version 9.1.0. And if we talk about particles, we cannot forget about TyFlow because we received multiple updates during August, being the latest one, TyFlow 1.009. And we have a lot of stuff. A new weight water solver, a Sue Brison blob mesh mode, updated to open BDB version 9, added curve to different operators to be able to control parameters in a non-linear way. On shape grid, we got a new grid slice method for more accurate convex subhulls for compound collider. And what for me is a huge, huge update, it's a new sticky birth penetration option to the physics shape operator. This allows for non-explosive extraction and a way more natural feeling, even when some geometry is interpenetrating. Before, when geometry is interpenetrating in physics uh, or similar, we have explosions, you was able to ignore it, but objects was falling through. Now with this method, it's super sticky. Now this was only possible with voxel systems, but voxel systems are slower. Now we have the fast approach of physics, but combined with this awesome look that it's amazing for distractions. I simply love it. We have some examples on Facebook group from Typeflow. They come from Boban and also from Dave BFX, and you can see how cool it looks. And yeah, Tyson never stops. And also tease what is coming next. We have a new algorithm for the new growth operator to find the shortest path between a particle and the specified surface. Also a lot of new useful operations with BDBs. As you can see here, we have a new BDB split operator, BDB merge operator, BDB copy out, and way more. And if all this was not enough, check this new EV growth algorithm that is coming to the growth operator. Again, this is not yet there. It's like a tease, but knowing Tyson will be there pretty soon and it's ideal to create procedural EVs. And as you can see, if you know Typeflow, you know that it's fast. You can see, you can update this in real time, but for people that they didn't discover yet Typeflow, yeah, Typeflow right now is an indispensable tool for 3ds Max. It's simply amazing. About tutorials and related to Typeflow, Victor Burman shared a very useful PDF with notes to discover and learn the new form generation tools in Typeflow. You can see this on Victor Burman webpage. Remember, you have the links on the description below. And now that we have Frost for free, maybe you will find interesting this tutorial from i2 Software, where they created this snow scene using Forest Pack and Frost. Pretty interesting and a way to use Frost. 
Autodesk released a talk by Edward McEvenue from Eddie Studios that he did during the Autodesk Vision series at Seagraph. He's covering 3ds Max, Typeflow, and Omniverse. Edward will showcase different workflows that he used on different projects over 40 minutes of very useful information. And during Seagraph on the Autodesk Vision series, we get as well this super interesting talk by Playground Games done by Dan Wurkski. I hope that I pronounced this well. Dan talks about how his team used extensively 3ds Max to generate all the assets that you can see on Forza Horizon 5. Forza is a AAA uh, Xbox game uh, about cars, and they cover how they use it on assets, scripts, baking textures, and LODs. This is a very interesting talk and showcase once more for the still non-believers that 3ds Max is used a lot more than not only for RGB. 3ds Max is used in a ton of places, as Dan is saying here. 3ds Max is the most popular package we have. Almost all of the game, all, all of the content you see in game has been created inside 3ds Max. And our favorite section, 3ds Max is only for RGB. People is asking a lot to do a video about tools for motion graphics in 3ds Max, but we have Typeflow that it's kind of like a tool of tools. And you can see here Ilan Cohen that shared this cool motion graphics advertising campaign using the popular Typeflow tool. Now we go to films. Abhilash Nair shared his work on the Indian film RRR or Triple R, where he used Typhlo for crowds, distraction, and fireworks. Very cool work by Abhilash. Damien Peinoat, environment artist at Blur, shared his work for Love, Death, and Robots, amazing series on Netflix, on the episode Bad Traveling. He used 3ds Max with Ray Clon to place all the good panels and have a lot of control for each room. And if you want to discover way more about this episode, Chaos Group did a behind the scene article talking with two CG subs for this film. Let's go now with characters. G. Vin created this stunning portrait called Woman in the Rain, done in 3ds Max, ZBrush, Ornatrix, Substance 3D Painter, and rendered in Marmoset. It's a stunning work. And another great character, now a very muscular chicken, done by Hyun Seok Jin. It's only in 3ds Max, ZBrush, or Natrix, and Substance Painter. It's for a new game that it's not yet announced. Even more characters, now with a very different look, we have Gohan, that personally I am a super fan of Dragon Ball. If there is anyone else, let me know. I watch every episode of Dragon Ball like a lot of times. And I found that this model is amazing. It's done by Ismael Ramos using 3ds Max, ZBrush, Ornatrix, Phoenix, and rendered with Corona. He has some animation there, and uh, yeah, pretty cool. This next project is also trying to replicate a fantastic work from a Studio Ghibli with a movie to Toro. Done in 3ds Max, ZBrush, Rise of UV, and final render in Unreal 5. Very nice and stylized work. We have as well a very cool making of from Saman Momadi. He created this model of Samus, it's a video game from Nintendo, if I am not mistaken, and it's model animated and FX done in 3ds Max and Marmoset Toolbar for rendering. For video games, Stray is a video game that you are a cat in a cyberpunk style work. Personally, I didn't play it, but I love it. I love the aesthetic of the game and I would like to try it soon. And Maxim Dorokov is a 3D artist at Blue 12 Studio, shared his work on different assets that he created for this game all done in 3ds Max with the help of Substance 3D Painter. And to wrap up this section, Tommy by Sanen shared this amazing entry called Dance Macabre as an entry for Assembly 2022 graphics competition, model in 3ds Max, Adobe Medium, and ZBrush, and it's all rendered in Corona. I simply love this piece of work, a lot of details, and yeah, amazing composition, lighting, and all the post-processing is great, uh, fantastic work. And during September, a lot of things happening, so that we have a lot of talks. So take note, we have the end user event that is probably the most iconic 3D event in the world. They have some of the best talks, top legend presenters, and it's in a pub. So you can have a pint of beer and listening to a 3D. So what else do you want? This year is back after some years that was not possible because of the pandemic. And it's happening in Utrecht. And it's between the September 22 and 23. Ports are open, so you need to register. I've confirmed some of the talks. One by Simon Nastasi. The talk is called 3ds Max is back in the game. And I totally agree. I don't know if it was never gone, but right now, as you can see with this news, 
man, it's amazing. We have as well Blado from the Chaos Group, we have Jose Pareja from Saha Hadid Studios, and Christo Belev. Let me know if you will be there. I would love to go one of these years, but yeah, this year was impossible for me. And more stuff will be announced, so follow the Facebook group. Remember the link below in the description. Another huge one, and this year will be the third edition of 24 Hours of Chaos. The event is organized by Chaos Group. It's exactly that, 24 hours of non-stop online speakers talking about Chaos product with speakers from all around the world. This event is free for everyone and will happen during September 8th and 9th. And we have Autodesk University 2022 that will be this year hybrid. We have talks online and physical in New Orleans. Will happen between September 27 and 29th. Autodesk University for whoever doesn't know, it's a huge event for all events Autodesk related. So they cover all the products with over 450 classes. They have top speakers every year. And there is obviously talks about 3ds Max. It's not only about 3ds Max, but also related to the industry. So it's a great place to make connections, discover new trends and get more knowledge about your most used software. A spot that already open for Autodesk University. And this will wrap up this month of August. August is normally quiet, but this month, oh boy, we had so many things and so exciting things. Uh, I think that between film effects, theme box products being free, some amazing plugins being free, and all the new type flows, thinking particles, man. We are seeing more and more activity around it, and I love it. And uh, yeah, I am finishing enjoying my holidays in Spain, uh, very soon going, moving to Montreal and then to Vancouver. And uh, yeah. Uh, thank you guys to be here. I hope that you enjoy the end of the summer and see you soon. Bye.